Elementor dropped an update the last couple of days that includes the alpha version of Elementor 4.0, specifically the global classes, or at least the initial part of the global classes. So in this video, I want to take a look over that, what it offers, how it works, and then I'm going to give you my feedback at the end. Now, speaking of feedback, let me have your comments down below. Are you trying this out for yourself? If you are, let me know what your thoughts are. Would you consider going back to this if you move over to something like Bricks or Breakdowns and so on based upon what they're going to be releasing in version 4? Just generally give me your feedback on this. I'd love to know. And as always, all applicable links are in the description below. So if you want to find out more about this, there's a GitHub article that tells you how to activate it, new features are available and how to test certain parts of it. I'll link that down below as well. So once you've installed it, activated version 4's editor, you'll see when you come into Elemental, we now have seven new elements on the left-hand side. These are what's considered atomic elements. In other words, we can apply the global classes to them, and this is where they're going to be moving over to, I'm assuming, in the longer term. So for example, if we take a look at Layout Basic Pro and so on, all these existing elements don't have access to the global class-based system. You can only use these atomic elements to get access to that. So let's go and insert a Flexbox and take a look at the options we have and how it kind of works. So the Flexbox is very similar to the container that we've become used to when working with Elementor. If we expand it, you'll see there's nothing inside there in the same way as your container. So if we select the Flexbox, you can see now the left-hand panel has changed somewhat from what we've kind of had in the past. First things first, we've got the HTML tag, so we're going to set this in this example to a section. And if you want to, you can set this up to be a clickable parent, which is quite nice to see. Let's jump into the style, though. This is where you'll start to see how we work with the global classes. So you'll notice at the top, we get this classes section. We've got this icon that allows us to go into the class manager. We'll come on to that a little later. And then we've got all the different settings we can affect as part of a class. Now, local is basically the unstyled version. In other words, we haven't applied a class to it. So anything you set up in here would kind of be at the ID level. And what that basically means is it's not something we apply globally. It's only going to apply to the instance that we have on screen right now that we're affecting. This will become evident as we go through and set a few things up. So with our Flexbox selected, let's create another one. Let's rename this first one. We're going to call this Flexbox Global. OK, so with that set, we'll select We'll change the second Flexbox to be section as well. So they're both exactly the same at this point. OK, so with our Flexbox Global, let's come into our style section and let's create a class. To do that, we simply click inside and give it a name. Let's call this one Section and create it. You'll notice now that Section is selected and Local is now grayed out. So we're now starting to set things up on a class level. So let's come into, for example, our background and let's set a background color so we can immediately see what we're doing and how it's affecting things. Set a color, we'll choose something like a blue. There we go. So we can see now the difference between the two. Our Flexbox Global, which has this section class applied to it, now has a background color. Whereas the Flexbox, the one that doesn't have the global class selected or applied, you'll see is still untouched completely as it is standard. Let's reselect the first Flexbox, our global one. And this leads me on to one of the first things that's kind of annoying about this alpha build. You'll see once I select that, it goes back and selects local. So it's taken me out of the section and gone back to local. So now, and I've been caught up by this when I've been testing things, I'm going to go back and start making changes. And then I'm going to realize this actually affecting, well, not what I wanted to affect. Why is it not doing it? Because it's auto deselected the section, which is the last class that I had selected. I would much rather it have a memory that says section is what I was working on the last time. That's what I want to retain right now. Otherwise, you are easily going to get yourself into problems where you have part styled on the class level, part styled on the local, or what's called the ID level. So it, the only the instance that you have that you're editing right now. Flexbox Global in this example. So let's come back in with section selected. Let's set something up like our size. So we're going to set a max width on here. We're going to set this to be something like 1100 pixels. I will set our width to be 100%, which again leads me onto another annoying thing. Lots of editors, or most of the ones that I use, if I type in percent, for example, as part of the value, it will change this over automatically to switch to percentage. It's smart enough to know that I want to change this. This doesn't do it, so I've got to manually click on that percentage. 
These little nuances, these little things that you get used to in other builders, and I'm not talking just about bricks. You can do it in generate blocks. You can do it in lots of different builders. When you're working inside classes and you're working to create lots and lots of classes, these little things that take you out of the, the flow of creating are annoying. So for example, if I'd come back out and I switched back to local by default, come in here, typed in 100, typed in percent, and then moved on, none of that has applied the way I wanted to. It's applied it on the ID level, and it's only said 100 pixels wide, not 100%. Just little things that the UI UX kind of becomes frustrating. I digress. Okay, so let's come into, for example, our border, and let's set a 12 pixel border radius. And while we're here, let's come into our spacing, and let's come into the padding. These are locked together by default. Let's set this to be something like three rem. So now we've applied a background color, radius to the corners, we've applied some padding, and we've applied a set width. Now, if you take a look underneath the Flexbox that we haven't applied that class to is still a blank, plain old vanilla Flexbox. Nothing applied to it. But if we come over to our classes and we click and we search for section, as soon as we apply it, that has now applied all those styles. This is the beauty of working with global classes. We can very easily set things up and we can apply that as many times as we want. There's no copying and pasting and faffing about and for example, if we create another page now, this is consistent across all those pages. So we can easily just come into anywhere that uses this particular class and make a change and every instance will change accordingly. So for example, let's change our background color from blue to a reddish color and you'll see both those instances change. Okay, but what happens if you want to leave all the changes in effect except for maybe the background color. Well, this is where local now comes in handy. If we select local, having Flexbox 2 selected this second one, and come into our background and change our color, and we'll set it to be blue, you see that now becomes blue. However, if we come back into section, and we do something like change our spacing. So for example, let's come into spacing, and let's unlink these and let's just put a little bit of margin at the bottom. So we'll do two rem. So you'll see now that's put two rem spacing at the bottom. And if we add another flex box in, so for example, let's just duplicate this one. You'll see that spacing is consistent. And this is the difference between the global class and the local or ID level. Now I don't want to go too heavily into what classes are and how to use them and so on. If you're watching this, chances are you already know what they are, at least have a basic understanding of them. So let's take a quick look now at some of the other things you can do here. You'll see we've got these little three dots on the side of each one of these different classes. These allow us to affect the different pseudo classes. And if you don't know what a pseudo class is, it basically means the normal state, the hover state, the active state, and so on. So when you say things like navigation and you hover over something, you'll have like an underline or the background color changes or the text color changes, something changes. But well, what you can do is you can use these to affect those different states. So we'll make sure we've got our section selected. We'll click and we'll come down to our hover. Let's set a different background color now on hover. Let's come over and say we want to set this to be something completely different, like green. There we go. So now you can see the section and the hover. They're kind of connected-ish to each other. So now if we come over, you see, when you hover over any of these, each one of them has that hover effect applied. You'll notice that even though the top one is red and these other two are blue, the hover effect still applies to them because we've set this up to work on the global class. The only thing we've overridden is by using local on the second and third flex boxes. So you can see this is pink telling you this. This is selected. And if you've got the background color, there's our background color change. So that's how that side of things works. You also notice if the three dots, for example, you can rename or you can remove your classes. So as this name will suggest, remove will just remove it from that particular element. Rename will rename it everywhere. But what happens if you want to remove the class completely? You want to delete the class. Well, the easiest thing to do is you come to your class manager, which is this little symbol by here. Click on this. We say save yet. We want to save those changes. We don't lose them. 
This will then give you a little notification about how this works. We'll say, got it. And there's our section. Now inside here, we have multiple options. We can click the three dots and we can rename it. Let's just rename and we'll say global section. There we go, we've renamed it. You can delete it from here. And if you've got multiple, you can move them around. You can also save changes. Basically it, that's all you have. So hit save changes, we renamed it, come back out, we'll select our flex, come into style, and you see now that's been changed to global section. So you get the idea. So let's add one more item in here before we sort of move on to a couple of things I wanna show you. Let's open our first one and let's go back to our elements. Let's add a heading in. So there's our heading. So one of the cool things about this now is that we can use whatever HTML tag we want. So let's say this is the primary title on our page and it's a H1, but we don't necessarily want to style it like a H1. We want to make it quite small, but semantically we want to have H1 because it's the first heading on our overall page structure. So let's select it, come over into our style. Let's give it a class name. We'll call this heading, let's call it three, for example. Now let's come into our typography. Let's set some values inside here. Set our color, we'll set that to be white. We'll set our font weight to be medium, but we're not gonna see any change on there. And we're gonna set our font size to be two rem. So it's quite small for a heading, but semantically it's a H1. Let's duplicate this. Let's remove that class from there. Let's create a new class. We'll call this one heading one. Well, that did. Let's go to general and set this to be H6. Come back in, come into our typography, select the heading one because it's gone back to local. See what I mean? We set our color inside here, so we'll set this to be white as well. But what we're going to do is we're going to set this to be super heavyweight. And we're going to set this to be 10 rem. So absolutely massive in this example. So now you can see this is a H1 and it's tiny. And this is a H6, and it's massive because the global classes allow you to style these in any way you want, but the HTML code underneath can be whatever you want it to be as well. So H1, H2, H3, and so on. You can make paragraphs look like headings. As long as it's semantically correct for your page and your design, you can style it in any way you want. One of the benefits of being able to use global classes. Pretty cool. Okay, so we've now got a basic flex box with some classes applied to it. We've got a heading inside there, again, with a class applied to it. One of the things I know people are going to ask is, what's the code like for this? Are we seeing any benefits for moving over to these atomic elements? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a standard, typical Elementor 3X container. And while we're there, let's open this container up and just simply add in a heading. Okay, so I'm not gonna worry about styling anything because the style is a CSS class anyway, so it's not gonna be applied in line, so it's not gonna make much of a difference. Let's hit publish and let's preview this. Okay, so let's take a little look at the code here. Let's expand this overall div, that's the kind of page element, let's expand this out. We've got a section, which is our top section we created using our new atomic design elements. And underneath, we've got the typical container way of creating this we have in Elemental 3.x. Let's expand the existing method. So you can see inside here, we've got one, two, three, four, four different elements. We've got a bunch of divs and the heading itself. So four divs to contain this just heading inside a container, which ideally should just be one div with the text element inside there, the heading element. That should be all it is, but we have four divs. Now, if we take a look at the section, which is just the new section we've just created using those atomic design elements and using the global classes, we now have a much more streamlined setup. We've got our section class, which is our kind of like our opening div. We've got our heading and our closing section tag or div. That's it, the way it should be. Just a section or div with the text inside it and our closing div at the end of it. Simple as that. So. Apart from anything else, all the bugs and the little quirks and things I found and the annoyances inside the editor right now, and it is an alpha build, so we will give it give it that. The code output that we see in, in this example is considerably better. That is something I am glad to see. 
Hopefully this is a trend that they will continue and they will get rid of a lot of that bloat that we are kind of come to expect from Elementor over the years. Even though they've got better over the last couple of years, you can still see we've got four divs to just basically have a container with just a text element in or the new way of working where we've just got the div, the text element and the closing div. That's the way it should be. So one of my final thoughts, honestly, I think they should have waited just a little bit longer and spent the time not only releasing the global classes, but also including variables so we could see how this would work and get a much better feel. Just having global classes where you style things is a benefit, but it misses a big chunk of the overall benefits when you combine it with variables. It's a starting point, and hopefully when they move this over to beta, they will include variables. So I'm hopeful that will be the case. The biggest takeaway for me is there are some really annoying things inside the interface that I think absolutely should be corrected. But I'm super pleased to see the code output is looking considerably better. And if they can keep this trend when it moves over to all of the different elements and widgets and things, moving over to this sort of atomic design principle, that will be a real step forward in what can be done with Elementor. Will it maybe go back and use it as my main tool? No, because I find Bricks is just much more mature when it comes to global classes, variables, and all those kinds of things. Elemental is absolutely playing catch up here to those key features that are already well established in other tools. But like I say, I am pleased to see the advancements. I'm pleased to see this actually moving forward. It's just a shame it's taken nearly five months to get to the point where we can actually start to test this out. I would have thought they'd be a little bit further down the line and variables and so on would have been included. But as always, let me have your thoughts based upon this video and your thoughts. And if you've tested it yourself, like I say, let me know. All applicable links are in the description down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.